Welcome to a little tutorial on how we use Fake News Fitness to evaluate websites. This is the website fakenewsfitness.org. It looks pretty awful. Don't worry about that. You're going to start by logging into it by clicking the login button. Your name is going to be your first name plus some number that I'll tell you. Well, that your teacher will tell you. And your password will be Auerbach. A-U-E-R-B-A-C-H. Once you log in, you're going to see the same thing you were at before. You'll see that I'd included Calvin as my uh, picture. If you wanted to change your picture at some point, you could just click on your name, click on Edit Account, and change your picture. But right now we're going to talk about the stuff that we have to do here, which means clicking on Classes and clicking on Our Box Science. We have one page check, this is the one that I did, and a page check is basically a lot of information about a particular page. So how do you complete a new page check? Well if you go to Our Box Science, there's a link right here. What's the URL of the page? Let's say we're going to grab this one right here. American Thinker. Sounds pretty smart. Well, this is the URL, so we'll put that right here. What is the domain name? Well, if you know what a domain name is, you'll know it would be AmericanThinker.com. What is the top-level domain? Well, you pick from over here, unless it's something weird. And over here we see it's a .com. If it was something weird, you'd pick that and put that there. What is the headline? Well, the headline is this one. The science is settled. Fracking is safe. Oops, I accidentally deleted it. So article headline, science is safe. What is the HTML title tag? You can ignore that. Article author. Well, it defaults to no author listed, but I think we actually have an author here. Uh, Jeffrey Folks. Now, it's kind of amusing to just figure out what else Jeffrey Folks has written. We can just open it in a new tab and see what else has he written. He must be some real big expert. Trump gets real, DC Empire. Oh, well, you know what it looks like? It looks like he isn't really much of an expert in anything. He's just writing a whole lot of stuff. Good to know. Anyway, what else do we want to know on this form? Date line or post date? When was this article written? Oh, very good. September 21st, 2014. It's nice when they tell you that. And... Is it clickbait? Well, does the headline match the article? What well, we're assuming normally that it does. Well, the article says is frac that fracking is safe, um, and this says science confirms the safety, so it sounds like this is not clickbait because it says what it's supposed to say. It's not talking about something else. Ad content ratio. How many ads are there? Pop-up ad here, and then we've got this uh, ad over here. And we've got that ad over there. So I would say that there's quite a few ads here that make me think that this is clickbait. There's an ad over there. So I'm going to say that there are too many ads to really trust this site. I mean, if you don't think there's quite too many, but that there are many, you could go to four. And this tells you the number that you just picked. Is this clickbait? That means, is this article here to get people to click on it? Or is this article here to get people to read it? And I would say that even though there's a lot of ads, it really isn't written to get clicked on. I think it's written to be read. Uh, I'll put it in the middle. So maybe it's a little clickbaitish. All right, what is the purpose of this website? Well, is there an about us to the website? Um, you usually look and see there are things that says about, and there it is. Here's the URL for about us. And a summary of About Us, this is what they say. Now you could just copy and paste this right into your thing, or you could summarize it yourself. Now I happen to know a little bit about this site because I've looked at it before, so I could write some other stuff if I wanted. What I'm noticing here is that uh, contributors are accomplished in the fields beyond journalism. Well, this guy, this reporter, writes only on everything, so he's not that accomplished. There's no limit to the topics appearing. 
but then it's about national security and it's about the survival of the state of Israel. Those seem kind of like right-wing stuff. So my guess is that there's right-wing bent to this. And so there is a limit to the topics. Anyway, just uh, talking. So who is? This is who owns the domain name. Now when we use the the form from the uh, extension, it's going to fill that in. But if you wanted to know who, who is here, you'd go to I can who is. And you'd say American thinker. And we look it up. And what do they tell us? They tell us that this person doesn't want us to know who they are. It is protected by privacy. So that's something to tell you because people from behind the New York Times do want you to know who they are. So this is a uh, private domain. And you can leave the rest of that off. Um, support for the claims. Now this is interesting, like what claim is being made and what are the links that support it? Well, you look inside the article and you copy the link addresses for anything that you want to check out. And this article doesn't have a billion link addresses, so this will not take too long to do. There's one. And let's see. Anybody else in there? Here's one. Okay, so let's see what we looked at here. Well, we got something called Frack Tracker, something called MarcellusDrilling.com, which is probably pro mining. Uh, biznews.com sounds pretty nondescript and SlideShare is crowdsourcing. Anybody can post anything to SlideShare. So I'm not really impressed yet. Uh, other cited sources, do they say anything that isn't a link at the bottom of the article? They usually would if there was something. And I don't see anything here. Uh, evidence for claims. So what do I think about the evidence? Uh, we have one crowdsourced SlideShow one industry publication, uh, one generic publication. There's nothing anywhere that you'll find about who these people are or what they do. If I wanted to look for, Wiki say, what Wikipedia said about them, it would say almost nothing. Uh, but let's just say about us and see if anything shows up. What do they have to say about themselves? About biznews.com. And we find out that it's a remote company. Not really a trustworthy source. So um, one untrustworthy source. And who are these last people? This fracktracker.org. Uh, Frack Tracker Alliance. Well, it's an organization and it's an alliance and they either are against fracking or pro-fracking or something. They're going to either be above, for or against this kind of thing. Let's see what their About Us says. Uh, studies, maps, and communicates the risks of oil and gas development to protect our planet and support the renewable energy transformation. So that would indicate that they are not particularly interested in fracking, but maybe they are. Leading resource on oil and gas issues and a trusted asset. Hmm, that sounds pretty good. What does Wikipedia have to say about them? Well, nonprofit that does this kind of stuff and nonpartisan information funded from foundations. I'd say they could be could be legitimate. So I might say uh, one possibly legitimate source. But the question then becomes what is the actual data behind these? And I'm not going to go into that now for our video, but you'd have to really read what the article claimed and what these folks actually said to see if there was a match and whether you trusted it or not. Um, the next thing we have is the bias level. So does this seem like a very biased article? Well, if it's saying that it's, it's, fracking is safe, well, science could actually mean that fracking is safe. On the other hand, based on the use of an industry publication, MarcellusDrilling.com, and based on this being a right-wing thing, I would say it's probably a bit biased. So I'm going to go with um, a bias level of 2. 
And how biased am I? Well, I'm pretty much against fracking, so I'm going to say that I am uh, number one is high anti-bias. I'm really against fracking. Okay, trust markers. What makes me trust this page? Well, I think the only thing that I really think makes me trust it is that the writing is very good. But there are many things that make me mistrust it. Advertising, the um, uh, evidence links, uh, layout, um, mission of publication, mismatch of author expertise, and topic. That's enough for now. So my trust rank is going to be, I really mistrust this. Well, maybe I just somewhat mistrust it. Maybe there's something good in there. So I'm going to go to two. Really mistrust would be that it's just heinous. And reasons for trust rank. Now you could say that's pretty much the same thing as the mistrust markers. Um, but I might have some other things to write here as well at this point. Right now I'm not going to do that. And then this is the question. So these are questions to ask of people who are coming through and giving comments on my page because I want people to answer questions. So I'm really interested to know uh, what exactly is that biznews.com? Because that seems like a very strange thing to me. I can't quite make sense of that. What exactly is biznews.com? Boom! And this automatically should pick Auerbach Science and so I say save and now it creates this article for me and if I click on Arbach Science now, I will see that there is John writing this article that I just signed in on, and it shows up here. And if I go and click on my name over here, I'll see that this is something that I made. But we also have a Chrome extension that will do a bit of this work for us. So the URL to the Chrome extension is google.zogsgru, whatever that is. And if I go and put that URL into my web browser, it will automatically rewrite it as the Chrome extension. And here it is, and I can add it to Chrome. I click Add Extension. And what's going to happen is this little green button is going to pop up right there. And when you click on that little green button, you get a form. So we first want to go to the article that we're interested in evaluating. Here's the article. And I'm going to reload the article now so you can see all those lovely ads that pop up all over. And then I'm going to load the form. Now, right now there's a thing that says check page. Maybe that won't be here when you see it. Maybe it'll load the form automatically. But for now, we'll just say check page. What is the group? Well, if you don't remember, you can click this little button. If you're logged in, you'll see this. If you're not logged in, you'll have to. And it says group 516, and that's what your group is. Now, this is the email address that you have. And what is your email address? Well, you can go to your name and click on Edit Profile. And Extension ID, that happens to be the name, your email address that we're using here. If you were to go to Edit Account, uh, it would also say that. So that's your email address. And that allows this thing to be loaded. So you'll see that it automatically grabs the URL, it automatically grabs the domain name, it automatically grabs the top level domain. Doesn't grab the headline because this headline is not an H1 tag. If it had been one, it would be grabbing it. And usually when that is empty, it's a reason to mistrust the site. On the other hand, the science is settled, fracking is safe is the headline, and I can just copy and paste it from here. Article author. Well, it didn't have a way of figuring that one out, so I'm going to have to grab that automatically got the date. but So I think what happened is they published this paper on September 21st, but then they updated it on Friday, October 3rd, which is pretty soon after. Did the headline match the content? Yes, it did. How do I think about the ads? Uh, there's many ads, maybe too many ads. Is it clickbait? Maybe it's, maybe it's clickbait. And then I get to go to page two. Now page two, this is where I can start putting the links from my uh, from the sources, copy link address, click it over here, and then say add another link, maybe there's another one, and so you'll see this is how these things get added. If I don't like it, I can remove it. This probably will not say this later. Oh, and here's the who is lookup, saying that it is privacy protected. Do you gain a lot by being able to have that stuff automatically filled in? I think you do, but it's up to you which one you'd like to use better. Now, what happens when you submit? It worked! 
And that's all you need to know. Again, you could go into your page and see what it looked like by going to Classes, Arbach Science, and here are a bunch of tests from John, which I will delete later.